it's time for our main event. The rematch of last year's unanimous choice for fight of the year, Juan Manuel Marquez against Juan Diaz for Marquez's legitimate lightweight championship of the world. Marquez versus Diaz is being brought to you by Mandalay Bay. The time is now to escape to Mandalay Bay. Go to mandalaybay.com to book today. Cerveza Tecate, con carácter. AT&T Viva Mexico plan. Make calls with your wireless phone to Mexico or from Mexico as if they were local calls. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. A beautiful night in Las Vegas. Not so beautiful for Daniel Jacobs and his small entourage as they now absorb the disappointment of a shocking first professional loss. But now let's get ready for Juan Manuel Marquez against Juan Diaz. When first they met, February 28th last year in Houston, Diaz was the hot young force in the lightweight division, but Marquez had just won the lineal championship in his preceding fight against Joel Casamayor. So what happened in Houston with a raucous crowd of more than 14,000 in the arena? Let's take a look at how and why it was the fight of the year. Marquez came in against Diaz with the home crowd entirely on Juan's side, and the energy of that probably had something to do with what happened in the first three rounds, Emmanuel. Came out of trying to fight to satisfy the crowd instead of fighting a more technical fight. And he burned himself out, I think, physically and mentally, the way they was fighting, and as a result, the more experienced Marquez came on at the end and fought a very good technical fight. He has landed those two big left hooks in the second round going into the corner. Those are probably his two best punches of the fight. But throughout the first several rounds, the left hook was effective. And as round five ended, Marquez was bleeding from outside the right eye. But now as the eighth round ended and the ninth began, it was Diaz who was bleeding profusely from a cut outside his right eye. And Marquez was closing in for the kill. Well, Marquez is a very good season fighter. That's the one thing that always favors a veteran fighter is when fatigue sets in because the experienced fighter can fight like he can go in the automatic drive pilot and he can drive. But a young fighter don't have the experience, he doesn't have that luxury. And as a result of this, Marquez just systematically placed his punches, knocked him out because he knew pretty much the position that his head was going to be in when he threw certain punches and he threw the follow-up punches right where he knew he would be in. So the last brilliantly placed uppercut sealed the deal and Marquez continued on as the lightweight champion. Let's take a look now at a graphic of the division as we get ready to go into this fight. And again, despite the cataclysmic loss to Mayweather last September, Marquez is still the champion of the division. Diaz is a top contender, though he had his last couple of fights in the 140 pound weight class. Humberto Soto has a title belt. He's fought brilliantly, has never beaten one of the top stars in such a way as to become a top star himself. Robert Guerrero, you saw earlier this evening, Probably his reputation slips a tiny bit as the result of that showing. Michael Katsidis has become a better boxer and is clearly the most powerful puncher in the 135 pound weight class. Now, coming into this fight, Emmanuel, the big question in the minds of boxing media, what can Juan Diaz do to make it a different fight? So far, nobody has come up with a convincing answer. What can he do? Well, it's, he got a rough assignment because I've figured out all of the different alternative strategies for him. This, he's got a rough fight on his hand. It's, it's, to me, he's going to have to be in good shape and be mentally prepared for a long fight and try to fight intelligent and not be so emotional and not fight that bump rush type style of fight that he normally does. But I don't know if he can do that. His name is Baby Bull. That's his style, and I don't know if he's going to change. But he's going to have to be prepared for a longer fight and a fight in a more intelligent way where he paces himself. The loser, his career will be in crisis. The winner will be looking for other big fights. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Marquez and Diaz, and you'll see the age advantage for Diaz, who's 10 years younger, but there are many ringside media types who believe that the younger fighter is the more shop-worn, the more beaten up of the two coming into this fight. A one-inch height advantage for Marquez, an inch and a half arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, that's an issue for Diaz. Marquez was one and a half pounds under the weight limit. Diaz was right on it. Tonight they weigh one pound different, 143 and 144. CompuBox numbers. In the first fight, Marquez landed 36 more, threw 49 less. His connect percentage was rising round by round throughout the fight. 
Diaz's connect percentage was going down throughout the fight. Power punches, and this is where Marquez really won it. 47% of his power punches landing, a lot of them selected counter shots that took advantage of Diaz's aggression and nailed him right on the chin. Now let's go to Michael Buffer to begin the pre-fight festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like everyone to please remain silent and please stand for two national anthems. First, here to sing the national anthem de Mexico, please welcome Reli Barba. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tu sienes de oliva, de la paz el arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios escribió. Mas yo usaré un extraño enemigo, Profanar con su planta tu suelo. Piensa, oh patria querida, que el cielo, un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain silent and standing for the national anthem of the United States of America to be performed by Angelica Castro. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight Leaving, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. So here's a look at Juan Diaz as he enters the ring. Yesterday we asked him 
if he thought it was a bad idea to give Pauli Malignaggi a rematch on a neutral court in Chicago after having gotten a very judge-friendly win over Malignaggi in Houston. And he said, yep, that was a mistake. Uh, but he said that he had wanted to be sportsmanlike, and he also had wanted to prove that his victory in the first fight was legit. So he wound up going to the well twice against Malinaji when it may not have been the best of decisions. But a big reason, Emmanuel, by why many are picking against him and why Marquez is a big favorite here tonight is that this young man has completed his college education, is planning to take the LSAT for admission to law school in October, and frankly, given the kind of effort he makes, And to pick up the point, given the kind of effort that Juan Diaz puts forth, I don't know anybody who thinks he isn't going to pass the LSAT. He'll figure out a way to do that. And then he has a pathway toward law school, and frankly, that means that his boxing career is not life and death for him, Amanda. Now that's true. You know, his, one of the greatest things that he had was keeping his focus, all of his energy, which was very, 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 to me, strong then to be going to school, taking up lawyer courses, and being a professional boxer and a world champion, not just a boxer. But now that he may have possibly even start practicing law or preparing for a big test, it's going to be very hard to keep all of your mental energy all focused into boxing. And that can be a big uh, distraction, especially fighting a guy like Marquez, who's I mean, 100% focused, and to speak to him, he's speaking as if he's just starting his career. I mean, he, he has no plans to do anything but to box, and he's looking at all of his future fights and, and only thinking boxing. He has, for his part, says, I have no lack of desire. There's still plenty of motivation. I'm still just as much a boxer as I ever was, but he's lost three of his last five, one of the two wins was controversial, particularly because of one outlandishly lopsided scorecard. And he's a heavy underdog tonight. You can't count him out because his will, his heart, and his effort level are as big as they get. And you want to see if he can still retain or go back to that intensity that he fought at early in his career. That's that intensity that he fought at early in his career. And even the first part of the fight with Marquez was tough for anyone to compete against. But can he maintain that? So here's Marquez. And many of you surely saw his annihilation at the hands of Mayweather. Remember, having beaten Diaz at 135 pounds, he agreed contractually to go to 144 to fight Mayweather, never envisioning that Floyd might see this as an opportunity simply to come down no lower than 146 and pay a $600,000 penalty for the advantage of being the bigger man in the ring. And then once the weigh-in was completed and both of them rehydrated back to something like normal hydration levels. Then Marquez says, hey, I was outweighed 15 pounds. Under those circumstances, I'm not all that disappointed now I did. of a lot of fighters, Emmanuel, you might worry about how much confidence was lost in the damaging annihilation at the hands of Mayweather. But in the case of Marquez, you would say to yourself, probably none. This is a guy who yeah. believes in his technique. No, after speaking to him, I don't think his confidence level has dwindled at all. I mean, he feels that he lost the fight because Mayweather was a bigger guy and really a super fighter. And he said that, and uh, but uh, he feels that fighting in his own weight class, he is very superior to anyone out there, and I think that uh, you can read that, and that's his true thinking, not just what he was saying. And uh, Diaz, I don't know whether, you know, how much damage he may have suffered physically, even though they've both been in tough fights. I think 
the tough fights that he had with Nate Campbell plus the Marquez fight was very physical damaging. And then the Paul and Marlon Maggi, I don't know what kind of just psychological damage that Paulie put on him, even though it maybe didn't hurt him. So. And one more small note, Emmanuel. Both against Nate Campbell and then late in the Marquez fight, Diaz seemed to be very bothered by his own blood. More bothered than most fighters are, are bothered by being cut. Yeah, that's true, you know, and that's, and that's a lot. He's a young fighter. He's not a veteran fighter. But he's been in all of those hard fights right now. He's experienced a lot. But traditionally, fighters who fight with his type of fight style, when they hit the 25 or 26 mark, they usually start slowing down anyway. They're not like the standard boxing, the guys aggressive type fighters. They're very successful when they're young in their career. And about 25 minutes, they start slowing down anyway. All out pressure fighters, particularly those who sometimes have smaller bodies in the ring, have a long or have a difficult time sustaining long careers. Let's go to Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, Golden Boy Promotions with Marquez Promotions are proud to present the main event of the evening. This is for the Ring Magazine WBA WBO Lightweight Championship of the World. Scheduled for 12 rounds and sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza con Caracter, and at and Viva Mexico plan. Make calls with your wireless phone to Mexico or from Mexico as if they were local calls. Nevada State Athletic Chairwoman Pat Lundville, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, WBO President Francisco Paco Parcarcel, Supervisor Luis Perez, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Michael Welsh. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Patricia Morse Charman, Jerry Roth, and Glenn Trowbridge, and inside the ring, the referee in charge of the action, Vic Draculich. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world on HBO pay-per-view, ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing navy blue official weight, 135 pounds. Professional record, 35 victories, including 17 knockouts with three defeats. He's the challenger, former three-time world champion, the fighting pride of Houston, Texas, Juan Baby Boo. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, officially weighing 132, one half pounds. His professional record, 50 victories, including 37 knockouts with five defeats and one draw. De Ciudad de Mexico, the future Hall of Famer, three-time world champion, and the reigning, defending, lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez. Under the ring. Two seconds. All right, gentlemen, this is for the WBA and WBO World Lightweight Titles. You've received your instructions to address him. Again, I want to caution you. Any punches below this point are going to be called low. Golpes de bajo de este punto, ser llamado bajo. With that said, I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. But us con mis comandos, we go to Jerse as soon as siempre. Touch them up now, good luck to both of you. Token lows, buena suerte, hombres. Juan Manuel Marquez waited years 
to escape the shadows of his more famous Mexican countrymen who fought pretty much in the same weight class, Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. He has finally outdistanced them now as he continues to reign as the legitimate lightweight champion of the world. Here's Diaz again to try to take that championship from him. This chant is for Marquez. You know, it isn't amazing that they're hollering Mexico, Mexico, even though Diaz is a Mexican-American, Marquez is a Mexican from Mexico, you really can feel, feel the national pride that they have for Marquez compared to Diaz. Yeah, and the chanting yes. in the fight last year was for Diaz because we were yes, at Houston, Houston. Where, we're to, where virtually everybody was rooting for him. Marquez came through that fine. Now he seems to have the house on his side. He's been in so many exciting fights here. You look at the fights he's had with Pacquiao here, you know, Barrero, Mayweather. So, you know, eventually, and has performed pretty good in all of those fights, never been stopped. So, you develop respect through years of hard work. Still wants another match with Pacquiao. Still believes that he deserved to be the winner in each of their two fights. One draw, one one-point loss against Manny Pacquiao. That's Marquez's dossier. Outside of the knockdowns, he actually won more rounds in both fights, but the knockdowns worked against him. Three knockdowns in the first round of the first fight, a knockdown in the second round of the second fight. Those are the reasons that he did not beat Manny Pacquiao. Yep. Good body shot by Marquez. This has been a very tactical first round. Nothing like the storm that Diaz produced in Houston last year. Uh, Diaz is fighting a very small. I just don't like the way his hand defense, defense, defense is just too wide for me. But that's the way he's been trained. His defense is too, too easy to get hit to me. He's trying to outbox a boxer. Yep. And uh, Marquez is selling in there and timing him. That's the yeah, reason yeah. that it's difficult to do this against Marquez. Look at the brilliant skills. Well, Diaz said that he was impressed watching Mayweather's jab when he fought with Marquez. And that's why I figured he would try to box more, but it's just not his style. Diaz got in a good left hook. Marquez, for all his great skill, has never been that difficult to hit. He's an offensive fighter. Hard right hand by Diaz. And the fight is beginning produce, to produce some of the intensity and some of the fireworks that we saw last year. But it's going to get hot and heavy. You can see the look in Marquez's eyes. You know, he got hit with those punches. He wants to get even right away. <laughs> What I'm talking about. Look, that was a good round, okay? okay? Now listen. When this guy, when he's coming forward, okay? Then you can just use your boxing skills, okay? okay? That's all I want you to do. Use your boxing skills. Okay, now listen. Add your feints to it though, okay? okay. Look, but when throw the uppercuts. Catch them. Bring your hands up. Bring your hands up, bitch. That's it. When you're in there, lively, and use your combination. More punches. Here you see Marquez take advantage of that hands on the side position of Diaz by punching punches right through the center. A left uppercut and a straight right hand right between the gloves. Two of Marquez's 18 power shot connects in the round. Altogether, he landed 25 out of 57 punches. Better numbers than the 14 out of 48 for Diaz. Diaz used to average routinely 70, 80, sometimes 90 punches per round. In the last two fights against Pauli Malinaji, he was reduced to 49 shots per round. A very low punch output, it seems, for him. And the first round here, more of the same. This is what happens when Diaz tries to box better. Hey, Instead Diaz, of just yeah, fighting. Yeah, Diaz is fighting a very good fight at this stage here. A very, very good fight. And if he can keep doing that, he has a much better chance than fighting the way that he fought his first fight, trying to fight as if it's going to be a three or four round fight. Is that simply because he won't give Marquez as many counter punching opportunities? Well, I, I, yes, it would definitely cut down, man. Also, you can't get tired with Marquez. 
One of the best technicians in boxing where it comes to make, making adjustments as the fight goes on. They look at his first fight with Pacquiao. Down three times. First, first round, round. And then won the fight from that point on. And just because of the knockdowns, he ended up with a draw. But made great adjustments as the fight progressed. Marquez is so confident in his uppercut that he will reach for it from what would seem like outrageous distances. Yes, because he, he's in most of his punches, he, he never throws too many shots over the top. You notice he shoots his jabs and his punches, mostly between the gloves and Diaz. Diaz is doing a much better job of creating yes. space than was the case last year. About a much, much better job. He's not in harm's way as often as he was last year. There's a very good left hook by the baby bull. And another good left hook. Jab by Marquez, but stopping Diaz in his tracks. But you know, right at this stage, Diaz is fighting a very good fight. I mean, much, much, much better fight than I expected, and probably most people, and, and maybe even his own corner. Perfect fight for him. Is he Consider. winning rounds, though? God, I don't know. They're close. They're both close. It's, it's yes. no, nobody's dominating yes. at this stage. I agree. Both missed big left hooks in the last 10 seconds, trying to take the other guy's head right off. Put the little left up a little bit up. And he can't touch you. He can't hurt you with that right. One. Close your eyes, one. And listen, be explosive. When you throw that left hook, throw the left hook, change it to the uppercut. There's a hole there. You can take advantage of that. And take that right hook. Go to the cut. I don't want you to reach for it, okay? Right. But you can hit with the right hand all day. But go with the stiff jab, jab, boom, shoot, set him up for the right hand. Okay. Deep breath, Deep breath. let it go. Throw your hook, get too high, okay? Mm -hmm. Get that behind your head. Throw your hook, get too high. Deep breath, Good luck, baby. Everything is good. Everything is a beautiful round, okay? You gotta move all the time, one. Copy box numbers in round two again. Favored Marquez, 24 out of 52. Diaz, 17 of 48. But of course, judges don't see copy box. Judges don't score on the basis of that. They form a more impressionistic view. Harold knows copy box, but doesn't allow himself to be guided by it. Harold, how'd you score the first two? Okay, Jim. 20 to 18, two rounds to nothing, one man. Well, Marquez. You know, Jim, it's a very interesting fight. For two minutes of each of the first two rounds, Juan Manuel Marquez just outboxed Juan Diaz with that left hand. Left uppercuts, left jabs, doubled up on the left hand. And then in the last minute of each of the first two rounds, Diaz stages a rally. You know, makes it look close, the place goes nuts, everybody's yelling Diaz. But truth of the matter is, Marquez outboxed him, you know, for the better part of the first two rounds. Two to nothing, Juan Manuel Marquez. Now what's forbidding about that, is that a very competent judge, one of the best in the world, Harold Letterman, gives two rounds to Marquez when Emmanuel Stewart says that Diaz is boxing as well as he possibly can. Yes, not necessarily that he's winning, but I think the rounds are very close. And it could be that Marquez has won the first two, or either Diaz, you never can tell. But it's a very good fight, and I think that Diaz is really, really impressing me a lot. And, you know, we have two good cornermen, too. We have Ronnie Shields, who's a very good trainer, and Nacho yeah, Barrison. Nacho Barrison, who is one of my favorites, because all of his fighters are fundamentally very sound. What's your take on Nacho? What kind of a trainer is he? I think he's a wonderful trainer. One of the best, is, I think, in the history of boxing. And uh, because all his fighters, are Ricardo Lopez, all of them are basically fundamentally good. He didn't work so good with Oscar because the chemistry and stuff wasn't there, but fighters who he's trained in the beginning, very good. Fascinating. Beristain says that he favors the technical art of boxing because that's what gives a fighter a chance to still be healthy when his career's over. 
Look at the kind of wars both Marquez brothers have been in all the way through their careers. Yep. This is another very good fight. Not as intense as last year in Houston, but very good. But you can see that the, the war in both of them is starting to come out. I'm looking at the eyes of Marquez, and you can see him turning into a tiger man. And, and, and Diaz is not going to back down to so much. The fight's going to get pretty heated up going down the stretch here. Crowd is loving what they're seeing in the third round in Vegas. Juan Manuel Marquez back at work in his comfort zone as a lightweight. Successful with that straight left through the center that he's been landing. Marquez lands a big right hand and a sweeping left hook. Diaz feels the need to come back right away. And they trade shots down the stretch. The box is beautiful, okay? All you gotta do is just keep boxing like that. Everything is good. Don't be waiting Now listen. What I don't want you to do right now is get in exchanges. Okay. You don't have to. Your box is good on the outside, okay? Give me a deep breath, let him out. You want some gate aid? No, no we're good with the gate aid. Okay? Listen. Look, you gotta you have to be smart with this guy, okay? Look. With your left, we're gonna do good. You gotta catch him. And with your left hand, keep it up so his doesn't get in. Throw the left hook and the uppercut with the right hand. Catch him. Copy box numbers in the third round again favor Marquez. 26 out of 64, the 17 out of 51 for Diaz. So Juan Diaz is doing as well as he can within the boxing style he's chosen for this fight, at least that's my estimation of it. And Marquez is simply doing better because this is the style in which he fought most of his career. They trade left hooks. And you know, Diaz is fighting like a basically fundamental type fighter himself. Just and almost a same version to some degree of Marquez himself for this fight. And it's amazing how both of them been very effective with their left jabs tonight. These two first met when Juan Diaz, at age 16, went to a boxing card in Mexico, roughed up and introduced himself to the great champion. Marquez said he was such a nice kid. Then they taunted each other at the weigh-in before the fight last year. That's what boxing is. You have to fight. himself to stay away and doesn't try to fight back at a moment when he's hurt. So far, he's done a great job of surviving. He was hurt, but he kept his focus, I think, for the most part. But, you know, because he's not the type of guy to retire up and clinch. No, he'll never clinch. In the past, when he's hurt, but he waved yeah, in and asked yeah, for yeah, more. Yeah, but at least he didn't go into an exchange while he was hurt. Exactly. First perilous moment of the fight for Diaz. And again, Marquez created it with that brilliant uppercut of his. He's a very, very dangerous fighter. Places punches very well, knows just where to throw the punches to. Seconds left in the round. Time. 
First small nightmare of the fight for Diaz, but he survives it. Marquez has every reason to believe he's in control. Hey, Val, give him a water, give him a water. Look, we lost that round, okay? Uh -huh. Listen, you know why? You stood right in front of him. Okay. And look, make your turns, make your turns. And you gotta file back when you make your turns, okay? okay. Give him a deep breath, let it out. Deep breath, deep breath. Now listen, add your, keep adding your feints to it, okay? okay. But look, when, when the guys... Oh, the end. You're doing good, you okay? Yes. Let's see, close your eyes. When you're in there, show him your style, show him your class. Uppercut, left, uppercut. And then with a hook and right hand. That uppercut in the right hand. Got him. Here, once again, we see Marquez landing the left uppercut. Most of all of his punches in both fights that have been effective have been punches up through the center. And uh, Diaz recuperated from the punch very well. Water over here. Power punches through the fourth round. Marquez, 61 of 109. Diaz, 28 out of 80. Diaz not doing too badly. Marquez, brilliant. Sticks the jab right into Diaz's mouth. Every round, it looks to me as though Marquez's right eye is going to open up and start bleeding. Every round, Nacho Barasain is able to hold it up. may be the picture book boxing round of Juan Diaz's yes, career. Yes, and I was watching his footwork, too. Every time Marquez starts getting set, I can see Diaz move away, change up, something I never thought I would see him do. And still he gets hit with a flush right hand. Another Marquez innovation, a right hand lead, uh, and he does it again. Marquez is so smart, so good on anticipation of your body movement. Every time you see Manny Pacquiao, you're tempted to say, well, Manny's the best offensive fighter in the sport. Then you see Marquez and you say, wait a minute, look what he does. Hey! <laughs> Don't let him get out of your, out of your zone, out of your area. Very good, very good. You're doing very good. That those other uppercuts, those are going to be good. Don't let him go out of your zone. Bring them up with that left. You're dominating him right there in the center of the ring. I need about. I need you to use them fast hands and then step around this guy, okay? But I need more punches from you now, okay? Let's go. That's. But look, when you finish punches, when you when you close to him. Run your, run your combination, make your turns, and then get out of there, okay? And use your face. I need a lot of face from you right now. Stay low. Okay? Here you see Mark has land a rare right hand. He hasn't thrown that many of them, but a beautiful overhand right hand. It cut right on the chin. And 
as the fight goes on, accumulation of a lot of those foul punches may take their effect right now. Right now, he's being able to get by, moving away. Diaz is boxing. I think he's fighting a very beautiful fight. Harold, how do you have it through five? Okay, Jim. Four rounds to one. 49, 46, one man, Juan Marquez. You know, Jim, we used to call this kid Juan Diaz the baby bull. He ain't the baby bull no more. He circles, he throws a jab, he circles again to say, you know, so that he's not in front of Marquez. Marquez, fighting flat-footed, is nailing him with real good shots. Good, hard left hands. On the other hand, Diaz, just, you know, he's got that flicking jab. Once in a while, he jumps in with it. But he always keeps circling. He doesn't bull in anymore like he used to. He doesn't come in with real hard power shots. You notice? Stays on the outside. It's not the baby bull style. He's become a boxer from the outside. Four to one, Marquez. Well, this is a decision that Diaz Frank, made to box against Juan Manuel Marquez. And, you know, frankly, you can question that decision. I certainly do. But on the other hand, he fought something more like his original style in the first fight against Marquez last year, and it didn't serve him well. He got picked apart. So at least he has the guts to try to make a change. But I, the change goes against the grain of common wisdom in the sport. I agree with you. That, it, it, you know, I guess after those terrible beatings he took from Nate Campbell and Marquez, <laughs> It was easy to, to make a decision to try to change, but he needs to do a little bit more of his old stuff in addition to the boxing. You know, it actually began with a victory. It, it began when he defeated Michael Katsidis in Houston in September of 2008 by boxing more than he had up to that point. But that wasn't boxing with a boxer. That was boxing with a slugger. That's what it's you're supposed to do. It's a big difference. You know, very few boxers in throughout history can fight one particular style and do what Barrera did change his career from being an aggressive slugger to the last half of his career being one of the best technicians in boxing. And I don't think anyone else will ever be able to do that. Andre Ward seems to fight in a slightly different style in every fight. He, he makes adjustments very well. Whatever is necessary to win a fight, he is able to do it. Marquez's face shows some damage from the early punches that Diaz landed in the fight. Mainly those jabs, Diaz. That's his most effective punch that he's landed. And a few high left hooks right on the top of the gloves. But for the most part, it's his left jabs. Brilliant stuff from Juan Manuel Marquez. Ronnie Shields, between rounds, seemed to be asking Juan Diaz to go back to something more like his original style, at least to throw more punches, throw more combinations. But that's a hard thing to do when you've already fought five rounds the other way. And especially the beams that he's taken before, too. Diaz is holding his own and surviving, but Juan Manuel Marquez is winning the fight. You start off good, and then all of a sudden you start backing out. You came back out, you remember? You got to go around him. Right. Okay, but look, I, when you throw your combination, when you double and triple your jab, he can't count him with the right hand. Okay? So don't let him, so just keep doubling and tripping the jab up. Here's a Marquez combination, Emmanuel. Watch yeah. this. Landed, landed, landed. And that's all why Diaz had his hands up. He still found a way to penetrate through his defense. Let's take a look at a punch zone graphic, which will show you where Juan Manuel Marquez's punches are landing. Pretty well distributed. 112 punches to the head, 29 to the body. He's not a big body puncher, but he will mix it in. In the last three rounds, Diaz has gotten off 37, 38, and 56 punches. So the 56 is a little more like what Ronnie Shields might be looking for. The 37 and 38. The, tr the, fr the trainer was getting frustrated. There's one of the Marquez body shots. was most effective against Marquez in the first three rounds of last year's fight when he was clearly fighting as the baby bull 
pressuring Marquez, throwing as many punches as he could, bullying the opponent into the corner. Frankly, I think he needs to go back to that. I think he's got to change it up from his box to a certain degree, but you know, right now, Marquez is systematically picking him apart, placing his punches, and, and, and he's going to have to be a little bit more physical and use his youth. If, if he can, but I don't know if he can do that at the stage of his career after the punishment he's taken in so many of those fights. There's no shame in getting picked apart by Juan Manuel Marquez. You simply leave right yourself right. open to the question, why did you try to box with a boxer? A master boxer. Step one toward being a great offensive fighter is you've got to be unafraid of getting hit, unconcerned about it. Marquez clearly fills that bill. Almost every round seems like Marquez gets some good volley going. Well, at this point, they have fought nearly 16 rounds against each other, incidentally, without a single clinch. And clearly, Marquez is confident that he knows the holes in Diaz's defense. Yeah, but I'm, Diaz's movement is creating a problem for Marquez. Yeah, I can see that. Marquez can't get set the way he did the first fight. Keep using it. Look, keep doubling and tripling that jab up like that, okay? okay. But when you get close, look. Yeah, don't, I don't want no jabs to the body, okay? Because you're leaning, you're starting to lean with the jab to the body, okay? Give me a deep breath, let him out slow. Now listen, use your feints as always, okay? Mm -hmm. But look, double and triple the jab. But when you get close now, we gotta start, we gotta bear down now. Okay. Okay? Look, keep your hand. Just like you have it, just like you boxing there with the combinations. He's hitting me with, with the glove, the thumb. The left, the left. Just the left. Come on, work it. And the uppercut. Go back May to the have seen the graphic a few moments ago, which demonstrated that Juan Diaz has landed fewer than half as many punches tonight in the first seven rounds than was the case a year ago in Houston. That's reflective of the dramatic change in style for this fight. Power punches through seven. Mark has 100 out of 183, 55%. What an accurate puncher. And he has 43 of 129, 33%, not bad. Not bad against a quality opponent. Marquez complaining between rounds that he had been thumbed in the right eye. That right eye is beginning to swell significantly and may represent the best opportunity in the fight for Diaz. Well, that's correct, and as a matter of fact, I was noticing when Nacho Berenstein went over to complain to the referee, and the referee went to the corner. But it's very difficult to do with the modern gloves that they have where the thumb is attached. It's just probably that the thumb went across it, but I don't think it was an open thumb type situation. But that has been the most effective punch for Diaz tonight, has been his left jab. started out and at the end of the evening we may be talking about Juan Diaz having lost four of his last six fights but give him credit 
Those fights came against Nate Campbell, Michael Ketsidis, Juan Manuel Marquez, twice with Pauli Malinaji, and Marquez again. And that's that's a impressive list of opponents. You would be hard-pressed yeah, to find any yeah, fighter in the sport yeah. outside of, say, Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather, who has fought a catalog of opponents that like that. And I am very impressed with him tonight. I feel he's losing the fight, but his boxing ability, I can actually see he's not leaning and getting off balance like I thought he would with his jab. And he, his movement is being a problem right there. As soon as Marquez starts to go forward, he kind of moves his body back, something he didn't do before. So they have been really, really training very hard and studying film for this fight. the crowd which was a pro market crowd but you see how they all can switch for the underdog as the fight progresses every time Diaz lands the punch now the crowd starts cheering him on you can't dislike the kid he's he's as lovable as anyone in the sport now listen yeah the jab the jab is working for you but keep doubling and tripling it okay double and triple it but he's still trying to set you up for the right hand okay but look double and triple it but then add your feints okay now look I need you to get a little closer and just work some combinations from me, okay? Okay. All right, we got to change something now, okay? Okay. Let's push him with it. What round is this? Ninth round, okay? We got four rounds left, okay? We got to push it now. The ninth, ninth round. Hey, you're winning them all. You're winning them all. Don't stop leading, please. He can, he can come up with a reaction and then we're impressed. Keep that left up. All left, all left. Don't let him come in. Don't let him come in. All lefts. Round nine begins. You heard Ronnie Shields asking Diaz to step it up. Harold, have you got it that right now? 79, 73, seven rounds to one. One, and well, Marquez, you know, Jim, I just don't think Juan Diaz can stand on the outside and do what he's doing right now and win the fight. In other words, just throwing that occasional left jab. No combinations, no real hard right hands. He's not pulling in. Juan Manuel Marquez just nails him with good hard solid shots because he fights flash footed and throws three, four, five punches at a time, just like you saw there. Juan Diaz just absolutely spends too much time on the outside, not enough time on the inside, doing some damage. Seven to one, Marquez. Well, I think right now, and Ronnie Shields gave him great instructions. He fought a good fight. He's losing it, but it's still been a good fight. The jab has worked effectively. Marquez's eyes virtually closed now. This is the time if you want to say, well, I want to just go the distance, not get knocked out. I can keep doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing. But if I want to go for the victory, now is the time I will try to step it up. Because uh, Marquez is handicapped by that eye injury. Hard left hand and a hard right hand by Marquez. Diaz wobbled again. And right. when Juan Diaz clinches, and that's the first clinch in the two fights, you know, you know he's in big trouble. It's the constant accuracy of Marquez. It's the fact he lands so many punches right on the button. I've been very impressed with Diaz's defense every time he's gotten hurt, though. He's very seldom got hit with another punch right away, which is something he never would have did before. His defense has been pretty good, and he clinched for the first time. Yep, fighting but smarter than before. Dangerous man, Marquez, though. I mean, all the time, he's, he's such a dangerous man because he's very intelligent. And his variety of punches is just unbelievable. And the flaming intensity, yeah. his yeah. concentration, oh, yeah. his very focus, intense. it's extraordinary. Very competitive man. He never misses an opportunity. Right. The right eye is swelling badly. There's blood trickling from his right nostril. And still, Juan Manuel Marquez is focused on the task of chopping down Juan Diaz. At this point, Diaz, from my perspective, needs to throw himself the ringside clock, the bell which they ring between rounds, and all of our monitors at, D, uh, at Marquez. Yes. It's his only chance. But what is his goal now? Is it to box, not get knocked out, or to try to win the fight? In the next three rounds, he's got to make that decision. Blood coming from the mouth of Diaz now. And if he had trouble focusing, 
in Mexico against Nate Campbell and in Houston last year with blood streaming down his face. How hard will it be as he tastes the blood flowing into his mouth? Joe, 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 Come on. His mouth is left. Come on. Here it is. Come on, Joe, get in. Go down, dude. Get that left. One. Now listen. When you double and triple the jab, everything is good, okay? Look. Don't stop pressing. Don't let him react. Don't let him build. Blow. All the left. With the left, you're catching them all. He's hitting them all. You're catching him with all that left. Ninth round was very one sided. 26 of 58 for Marquez. He has only threw 28 punches, landed only six. He was on the defensive most of the time. More than 20 seconds passed between rounds before Joe Chavez, the cut man, was able to get into position to look at Diaz's lip. It appears to be torn at the lower right edge. Bad, bad cut on the, on the right, uh, yeah, right edge of the lower lip. And you don't know how much of the cut is inside the mouth. So Diaz now has that to deal with, and as we pointed out, his response to his own blood against both Campbell and last year against Marquez, not particularly encouraging. Marquez, of course, for his part, fought Pacquiao twice with blood streaming down his face, and it never really bothered him. Uh, he's a true experienced warrior. You know, it, 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 Diaz is fighting, and I'm, it looks like he's more satisfied. He's kind of satisfied with his fight. Even though we may not be in Ronnie Shields' me, I think he's very satisfied with the fact that uh, he's not uh, in any serious trouble. I think he's very concerned about being knocked out. Juan Diaz was very honest with us in his fighter meeting yesterday when he said, look, as a fighter, this is a must win for me. I cannot afford to lose the fight. But as a man, that's not really true. I'm headed to law school. I have another life. And that, in the eyes of some, is another difference in the fight. Remember, Diaz graduated from college a few months ago, earned a college degree while fighting at the peak of his career, pretty amazing, and will take the law school admissions test in October. Let's hope it's easier than this. Diaz seems to be very comfortable working behind the left jab more than anything else. That's a punch he can land without taking too many risks. And he seems to feel whatever that can do for me, whether win or lose, I'm going to stick to that. I'm not going to take too many risks tonight. And if that's, that can be, when I start opening up with the wide punches, I can get hit more. So he's not throwing too many hooks all right hands. With a brain like his, and a life like his, he shouldn't take any chances. I would like to see him open up a little bit more the last round. I think he would do much better than he thinks. You're winning the fight. You, you slow down a little bit. It seems you're tired. Mind yourself when you when you get him on the ropes, okay? No, run your combinations up, all right? Don't forget the uppercuts, though, okay? You got uppercuts too, but turn and throw yours, okay? And look, combinations, okay? Keep your hands closed, tight and fire them punches in there. All right? Let's go, baby. Now, look, 
When you finish punching, move your head. Don't stand right in front of him, okay? The valiant Ronnie Shields never gives anything but his very best effort. Such passion, such care for the fighters. So many hard luck losses in big yeah. fights but over the years. Juan Diaz is very special to him and Willis Savannah because they've had him since he was a little kid when he came into the gym. I think he was about 110 pounds when he was 10 years old, I think. So it's a little bit more emotions they have with this guy than most of the fighters that they are involved with training and managing. The 10th round was one-sided, 30 of 63 for Marquez, 9 of 55 for Diaz. Marquez with a 56 to 15 connect advantage, according to CompuBox in the last two rounds. And as, as a good left hook by Diaz, he got an opportunity and he nailed him. But seems satisfied with what he's doing. Yeah, for the most part, he's still satisfied with going the distance of this fight. But, uh, you know, I, I think that if he stepped it up a little bit, he may be surprised at what he could do himself. Especially with that bruise, or that close, really, right eye of Marquez's. Well, it's a very professional effort by Diaz. Maybe that's what he wanted to prove to himself. And he can yeah. fight all the way through and execute a plan against a great fighter like Marquez. And no one is taking the kind of punishment that he's taking with the fight with Ben Campbell and the first fight with Marquez. So it's easy for us to sit here and say he should do this or do that, but he's got to have some kind of psychological damage in addition to maybe physical damage from those terrible beatings. See, now that he's pushing Marquez back, you can see the difference. What I said the last two rounds, he should have stepped it up a little bit, a even at a risk, but he should step it up. I think Marquez is a little vulnerable now. Yeah, in this round. Even though round, he's still a puncher, but I still think he's a little more vulnerable. Yeah, in this round, clearly Marquez's intensity has dropped, perhaps because Frank, Nacho Beristain keeps telling him between corner, or in the corner between rounds that he's winning every round. Mm -hmm. If you hear the trainer say that enough, after a while you figure, well, I banked a bunch. Right. And of course, all logic is that he has banked a bunch. Get the up. Get yes, up. he's won the fight up to the stage here, but Diaz has been a very good, good performance up. Because I mean, I thought if he'd have fought trying to box, he would not have been this successful. I've been very impressed with how well he's been able to box and maintain his balance and his defense tonight. Well, but all that'll get him is a hard-earned loss. At this point, I hope for his sake that Ronnie Shields will say to him, one round to go, and if you want to win the fight, you must knock that man out. Hey! All right, baby, last round. Now listen, I got, I got, I know, I know. Go ahead, Joe. Look, Juan, that's the last round. Uh -huh. Okay, look. I don't want you to run in. Okay, don't run in with nothing. Okay, okay keep staying to your left because you can't see out the eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, but look. Keep doubling and tripling the jab up. But when you get close, sit down on your punches now. You're not sitting down on them, uppercut. Mm -hmm. You're trying to throw fast punches. Okay? You're trying to throw fast punches, but now we need to sit down on them punches, okay? okay. I need... There's three minutes. Don't go out going crazy. He's going to come out strong. Uppercuts. Use your uppercuts. Let your hands go on the uppercuts. Here's a small copy box footnote. Marquez has landed the largest number of jabs tonight in any fight of his, tracked by Compu Box. Landing more jabs here than he did against the short armed Rocky Juarez. Diaz is one time stable mate for Houston. Harold, how do you have it coming to the last round? Nine rounds to two. 108, 101, one man, one Marquez. You know, Jim, the only two rounds that I gave to Juan Diaz were two rounds where I thought he was aggressive. Where he cut, you know, where he rushed him, tried to get inside, and landed some decent shots. Now he's doing it, but it's too late. I, I mean, for the better part of the fight, Juan Diaz stood on the outside, tried to win it with a left jab, and was totally unsuccessful because Juan, Man, Juan Marquez outbanked him. Nine to two, Marquez. No knockdowns in the fight. 
Although Diaz has been wobbled at least twice. Get him up, get him up. Marquez never really in trouble, despite the look of that right eye. That you can attribute to the accumulation of punishment from Diaz's jab and occasional left hook, and also to the accumulation of punishment from Marquez's nearly 30 years of yes, boxing. That's true, and the tissues around your eyes is so easily inflamed when you've been boxing that long and been hurt so much. And that's part of like a tradition with him is always his eyes in recent has been between being cut and swollen up. It's uh, something that you, you have to expect to some degree when you have so many fights like that. Expected. It'll be the 51st victory of Marquez's career. Reestablishes for the boxing public his identity as the legitimate champion of the lightweight division and sets him up for more down the road. What he really wants, but seems at this point unlikely to get, is a third fight against Manny Pacquiao. Good left took by Diaz. Marquez dropped his right glove casually and almost wasn't even paying attention. No. This time, he beats Diaz to the punch as he's coming in. I think this is still, even though he'll lose the decision, I think, me personally, I think inside Diaz has a victory for himself. I think the fact that he didn't get knocked out the fight, fought a fairly intelligent fight, I think that's a major victory for me, even though he won't get the decision for himself. Next up is the law school admissions test in October. And assuming that he then achieves admission and goes on to law school, it was one thing to fight and conduct a boxing career as an undergraduate. It would be another thing to try to do that while going to law school. A brilliant finish for the two fighters who produced the fight of the year last year. This will not be a candidate for the fight of the year, but it was an excellent spirited fight between two outstanding boxers. Marquez tours the ring, the shoulders of his cornerman. Nobody's going to bother to lift Juan up. There's no point in that kind of false bravado at this point. Let's quickly take a look at what happened in the fight as the two fighters await the judges' scorecards. Round one, the beginning of the combat. We saw Diaz with the intensity and the boxing style, but that combination by Marquez set the tone for what would happen throughout the fight. Round four, left uppercut by Marquez. I told you that Diaz was wobbled at least twice in the fight. That was one of them. Round six, more combination punching from Marquez. Round nine, this combination opened a bad cut on the lower right part of Juan Diaz's mouth. And then the final flurry that finishes the fight as the two fighters give it their all down the stretch. And now Michael Buffer is not ready, but now he arrives. There's Michael, he flips on the microphone. He holds the sheet of paper in front of him. Let's go to him. From the Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. Jerry Roth, 116-112. Glenn Trowbridge, 118-110. Patricia Morris Jarman, 117-111. All to the winner by unanimous decision and still Lightweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez.
Oh, let's take a look at copy box numbers for the fight. Marquez landing 288 here tonight out of 672. 43% is a brilliant connect percentage in a big fight. Juan Diaz 155 out of 579. Those numbers reflecting his desire to box and not to brawl in this fight tonight. Marquez landing more jabs in the fight than has ever been the case in his brilliant career. An average of 10 jabs per round. Diaz at 81 out of 336. That's pretty good jabbing for a guy from whom that is not his particular stock and trade. Power punches, 168 for Marquez, 74 only for Diaz, as once again, Marquez's accuracy and ability to throw multiple punches, particularly in trades with the opponent, gives him the major advantage in the fight. And we'll take a look at a punch zone graphic, which will show us where the two fighters were landing throughout the bout. Only 51 body shots landed by Diaz. He might have done better to perhaps try to go to the body more and take a little bit more out of Marquez. And you see, uh, or excuse me, only 28 body shots landed by Diaz. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. On the left side, you see Marquez's body, and only 28 body shots landed by Diaz, and that's just not enough to take the steam out of a terrific offensive fighter like Juan Manuel Marquez is. And now we're joined at ringside by the lightweight champion of the world, who produced a terrific effort tonight to get his second win over Juan Diaz. Juan Manuel, last year's fight was a nonstop barn burner from start to finish. This seemed like more of a technical boxing match. How was it different for you? Bueno, yo creo que la primera pelea fue una pelea difícil, una guerra para los dos. Esta pelea quiso poner táctica de boxeo. Nosotros hicimos también nuestro boxeo y yo creo que salimos adelante. The first one was difficult. It was a war for both. This one was a bit more tactical. We also wanted to box a bit more, but we were able to come out ahead. Diaz, for his part, clearly tried to move to a higher level of boxing skill than he has occupied before, and he put up a terrific effort at trying to do it. Were you impressed with what he was able to do? No, yo creo que es, Juan Díaz es un gran peleador. Él sabe también boxear un poco de técnica, pero es más agresivo, y nosotros creo que esta noche la técnica nos ayudó mucho a ganar. He's a great fighter. He knows some technique. He, he likes to box, obviously, but tonight our technique was in our favor. Was it satisfying to you to come into Las Vegas and put away once and for all the memory of what happened against Floyd Mayweather last year? Floyd Mayweather, el año pasado. Sí, yo creo que la afición se dio cuenta que hicimos todo lo posible por pelear con Mayweather con una diferencia de peso enorme, pero como todo guerrero mexicano nos subimos a, a partirnos la cara el 19 pasado. Yes, the fans know that we came to, to give the best fight possible, but there was a great weight difference. But like every Mexican warrior, we came to give our heart and, and uh, fight with our face. You've had two amazing fights against Manny Pacquiao. We all know how badly you want a third chance in the ring with Pacquiao. But you are also the legitimate lightweight champion of the world, which is a good pedestal from which to campaign against 135 pound fighters. So what's more important, trying to talk Pacquiao into fighting you again or dominating this division? No, yo creo que más factible pelear con Pacquiao la tercera. Yo creo que la afición la quiere, nosotros lo queremos. Esto es muy bueno para el boxeo, bueno para la gente que sigue el boxeo mexicano y la gente que sigue el boxeo filipino. The trilogy is what we want. I think it's the best thing for boxing, for the fans. The people want it, we want it, the, the Mexican fans, the Filipino fans, and everyone that follows boxing. Okay, so Pacquiao is more important than the lightweight division. Así es, yo creo que esa pelea es primordial para mí. That's it, that's true. That fight is primordial for me. It's the most important. Your brother has a huge assignment coming up in September against uh, Juan Manuel Lopez of Puerto Rico, who is a terrific champion himself. What do you think about that? Que va a ser una gran pelea, que ese tipo de peleas la afición es la que quiere ver, y yo creo que la van a disfrutar tanto como la mía y la de Rafa con López, va a ser una gran pelea. It's a great fight, and that's the type of fight that the people want to see, and like my fight, Rafa, López, that's the type of fight that people want to see. All right, thank you again, Juan Manuel, and congratulations on another brilliant win. Muchas gracias, y posiblemente yo estoy listo para otra pelea en noviembre, y ojalá se decida Pacquiao. Thank you, and I'll be ready for another fight in November, possibly, and hopefully Pacquiao will decide. All right, thank you very much indeed. So let me turn to, uh, for just a moment, to uh, Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, he makes clear he wants Pacquiao. He has a passion for that fight, and I think it would be a good fight, but I think he's going to have to realize that Pacquiao is moving on, and he's got to find some other fight. 
All right, let's turn to Juan Diaz now, who graciously agrees to join us at ringside. Juan, uh, clearly you wanted to box more than uh, was the case a year ago. And from our view, you succeeded in doing exactly that. How do you feel about your performance? Well, I, uh, I followed the game plan. You know, I used my jab. It was working pretty good. But uh, Juan Manuel Marquez is a great fighter. You know, the, the judges uh, saw him win tonight. So that's the way it is. I have a hunch that uh, you've now spent two long fights in the ring with a guy who is either the best or the second best offensive fighter in the sport. Uh, that was not a very easy assignment for you, right? No, it wasn't. You know, Juan Manuel Marquez is a great fighter. I give him all the credit in the world, and, uh, you know, he was a better man tonight. Juan, let's face facts. You've lost four of your last six fights, and you're taking the law school admissions test in October. It was one thing to fight a brilliant, high-level professional boxing career as an undergraduate in college. Law school is harder work. What's your future? Well, I got to uh, sit down with my trainers, my manager, and uh, really uh, consider the, uh, my future in boxing and, and see where it takes me. You know, uh, boxing has been great to me. HBO has definitely been great to me. And uh, I know come October 7th, I'm going to knock that dang LSAT out. <laughs> Every boxing fan in the world roots for you to pass the LSAT. Are you telling us that there is a chance you will not come back to the ring again? Uh, I have to really reconsider uh, all the facts and uh, see what happens from here on out. You know, uh, I put up a hell of a fight for uh, 10 years. That's more than a lot of fighters stay in the game, you know, but I just have to see. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, no, I'm not going to fight anymore, or yes, this is uh, my last fight, because the, uh, the opportunities are endless in, uh, all, all around the globe. Well, it's been a pleasure to deal with you in every way, and whatever your future is, we wish you the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim. And I want to thank all the fans in Houston. Give them a great, great big hug and kiss. Thank you for all the support and all the prayers all these years. I love you, Houston. All right. Thanks very much, Juan Diaz. Emmanuel Stewart, he's a winner. He's a winner. You know, when I look at his losses, every one of those losses were guys, for the most part, outside of Paul Malone, who are Hall of Fame great fighters. I mean, it's so it's... It's no embarrassment. He's been with some tough competition for a young guy his age. All right. So that was it. Juan Manuel Marquez and Juan Diaz producing a worthy successor to last year's fight of the year. And in case you missed it, there was a seismic shock on the undercard. As largely unknown uh, Dmitry Pirog from Galenchuk, Russia, if you've ever heard of that, came to these shores, took on one of the most celebrated young prospects in America, Daniel Jacobs, surprised him with his athletic quality in the early rounds, and then, I believe in the fifth round, is that right? Knocked him out with a stunning right hand over the top. So Jacobs, like a host of young prospects before him, including, for instance, Amir Khan, has to now find a way, including Jorge Linares, who was in the first bout on the undercard tonight. Jacobs has to prove he can come back from a cataclysmic shock early in his career. And Marquez, having solidified his hold on the lightweight championship, makes clear he wants a third fight with Manny Pacquiao. Let's see if that takes place. Meanwhile, thanks very much for being with us. Marquez versus Diaz have been brought to you by Mandalay Bay. The time is now to escape to Mandalay Bay. Go to MandalayBay.com to book today. Cerveza Tecate, con carácter. AT&T Viva Mexico plan. Make calls with your wireless phone to Mexico or from Mexico as if they were local calls. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. We'd also like to thank our internet partners. And you can get exclusive updates from HBO's Facebook and Twitter sites. And as always at HBO.com, the online home of HBO Boxing. So now for our entire crew, and with special thanks to the engineers who got us back on the air after a stunning power outage, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs>